a second similarity uh, in the influence exercised on Hardy and Lawrence's works uh, would be the influence of church and hymns. Now, Lydia Lawrence was also influential in giving the young Lawrence a religious education, as he himself explains in Apocalypse. And here's a quotation from Apocalypse. I was brought up on the Bible and seemed to have it in my bones. From early childhood, I have been familiar with apocalyptic language and apocalyptic image, not because I spent my time reading Revelation, but because I was sent to Sunday school and to chapel, to band of hope and to Christian endeavour, and was always having the Bible read at me or to me." Unquote. He goes on to describe the excessive extent to which biblical uh, teaching was, quote, douched over the mind and consciousness when he was a child. And he suggests that his loss of faith originated from the overbearing dogmatism of the nonconformist church. Nevertheless, Lawrence's religious upbringing made a lasting contribution to his literary style insofar as the hymns, um, which he calls the rather banal nonconformist hymns that penetrated through and through my childhood, uh, this is a quotation from his essay, Hymns in a, Man, in a Man's Life. These hymns furnished him with symbols and formulations which he adapted to suit his material and his convictions. Now, this is particularly apparent in his Mexican novel, The Plumed Serpent, which stages the creation of the Church of Quetzalcoatl and delivers its doctrine by means of the hymns of Quetzalcoatl. These hymns, though invented by Lawrence, are partly drawn from his readings on the Aztec culture and from the hymns of his childhood. Thomas Hardy was also made to attend church as a child and, like Lawrence, was more impressed by the wonder of the rituals and the music than by the spiritual meaning they contained. Before his birth, Hardy's father had been an essential member of the local church choir, along with his father and brother, until it was replaced by a barrel organ. Uh, but Hardy's father continued to perform with other players in private and social gatherings, giving the young Hardy a strong taste for music, uh, which church attendance further developed. Besides the beauty of the building, music and language, which mostly appealed to him, Hardy's interest in the church lay in the possibility of entering the ministry, Again, not especially on the basis of faith, but as a way of seizing greater social and educational possibilities. Hardy's gradual progression towards agnosticism is therefore hardly surprising, fed by the kind of fatalism evident in his novels and inspired by his mother, as well as by his philosophical and scientific readings, uh, Darwin's Origins of Species among those readings. Hardy himself stresses his indebtedness to the language and music of the church in his uh, semi-autobiography, uh, Life of Thomas Hardy, and singles out three hymns which he writes, uh, and I quote, have always been familiar favourite hymns of mine as poetry, Unquote. And the third of those hymns is Lead Kindly Light. Now, amusingly, this is one of the hymns that Lawrence singles out quite differently in his essay as being part of, and here's another quotation, sentimental messes such as Lead Kindly Light or even Abide With Me, unquote, which Lawrence detested and was glad the Congregationalists avoided. Let's talk now about the two writers' educations. 
Uh, poor health and limited means did not prevent both authors from getting a good school education. Lawrence attended Nottingham High School from 1898 to 1901, and Hardy was sent to the Dorchester British School to resume his education after a bout of illness from 1850 to 1853. And then he went to a uh, commercial academy, as it was called, from 1853 to 1856, where he studied commercial writing, mathematics, French, and took up Latin at his mother's insistence. Both of them were first exposed to the differences between town and country by having to travel from Eastwood to Nottingham for Lawrence and from Bockhampton to Dorchester for Hardy every morning. Although the two boys appear to have enjoyed learning and succeeded rather well in their studies, the family finances of both meant that further education could not be considered and the boys had to seek employment. However, Lawrence, as we know, continued to read extensively and to discuss ideas with Jesse Chambers, uh, while Hardy, whose early ambition it was to become a minister of the church, continued to school himself in Latin and even started studying Greek under the influence of the other two young boys who were apprenticed with him. Um, and this later supplied Hardy with material for scenes in uh, his novel, The Return of the Native, and the other novel, Jude the Obscure, in which the protagonists, uh, Klim Yobright and Jude Foley, acquire books with the aim of giving themselves the formal education they cannot afford to receive.